YCS Indy is this weekend and I'm showing you the deck list I would have used for this event. This list is broken. It's something that I think I would have gone quite far with and I think you'd like the list and the concept. And as I explain the deck, I'm sure you'll be able to understand why I've built it a certain way. Let me know what you think below in the comments. If you like this type of content, click the subscriber and the like button, etc. We've got two new cards that are TCG exclusives called Ken and Jen and I utilize this in this type of deck list. There are things with this deck that I'll show you at the end of the video. Buckle up. YCS Indy is going to completely change the metagame as we know it and I think this is the deck list that would give you a huge edge if you were playing in the event. All right, let's get straight into the video. 41 card. So we got Ken the Warrior Dragon and free Gen the Diamond Tiger. Now what these basically do is they summon the other version of themselves to your opponent's side of the field and then they mandatory trigger their effect. If we normal summon Ken, we will summon Gen the Diamond Tiger to our opponent's side of the field. Then this mandatory triggers and makes your opponent discard from their hand. Then if you switch these around, they are summoned in defense mode by the way. If you summon Jen the, the Diamond Tiger and then use the effect to summon Ken the Warrior Dragon from your deck to your opponent's side of the field. Now this lets you draw two cards and then discard a card. They are once per turn. When you draw two and discard one, you can then potentially take their copy that you summoned and then use its effect again to summon Jen the Diamond Tiger and now they are forced to discard a card. That's important to note. The way to enable that is we have free Frost, free Talents, because it counts as them activating an effect. So it means we can Frost, they control a monster, add the card to our hand, or we could Talents, look at their hand, or we could take control of it and then use the effect and then summon the other one to their field. So now we've got two monsters, they've got one monster, and we can use it as material, link it to IP, which then we can use SP in their turn. Then we're playing a change of heart, because change of heart's broken now when we go first. Usually it's only good going second, but now it's broken going first, and mind control. Same thing applies with change of heart. This is broken if we open it when you go first or second, because you can take your opponent's card and use them against them. Now we're playing a small dark world engine but this engine is just enough to give you what you need to beat them the aim of the deck is basically to rip cards from your opponent's hand stop them from playing and set up a, a nice controlling board to be able to win and if you go second you basically can do that in game one and then use their monsters against them with frost and talents and change of heart and mind control and you're going to be summoning multiple monsters to be able to beat them we're playing i actually don't have these cards but one's called Cyrilly, the guru of Dark World, and one one's called Silver, the Dark World. So what Silver does is if this card is discarded from the hand, you can then special summon it. And if it's discarded by your opponent's card effect, so i.e. Ken, because it counts as their monster, they have to put two cards from their hand to the bottom of their deck. And then Cyrilly, what this does is if this card is discarded but to the graveyard by a card effect, special from this card to your opponent's side of the field in defense position. If this card is special summoned by the effect of a Dark World card, your opponent discards a card. So if you want to discard a card, you summon it to your opponent's side of the field. And if you want your opponent to discard a card, you summon it to your side of the field. Now, how do you do that? You do that with this guy. If this card is discarded by a card effect, you can then add silver to your hand and then summon a level four lower dark world monster from your deck to either side of the field. You summon the Surly, which will trigger its effect. Also, its other effect is you can bounce a level seven or lower dark world monster you control to the hand to summon this from the graveyard. That's useful as well because then you can later on reuse these effects, but also you've got a 3000 beat stick now that you can use. That's this engine. Now the next engine, I'm sure you've seen before. Triple pretty memory, triple happy memory, triple sleepy memory, and one delicious memory. Three my friend pearly. Only double pearly. You don't want to open multiple. You'd rather normal summon the Ken or Gen. This is just to summon off one of the quick play spells. But you definitely need two. You don't want to play one. And then only two pearly lily. I was originally playing three. But I found that in testing, two was only pretty good. It is essential in two as well. Same reasons for this. You definitely need it in the later game. One trap. You need to be good with your sequencing for the trap as well and what you're returning to the deck because if you're in a grind game situation you are going to want to return your pearly monsters or your extra monsters then one street you don't need multiple because ken and jen will summon to their side of the field it will force out the ash blossom it will force out the impermanence because if they don't imperm it now they've got a card in their side of the field where they can't imperm you so you're good to go with your pearly lily or your or, or pearly that's pretty nuts as well next we have the only hand traps in the deck so originally I was playing free Impermanence and free Ash Blossom because I think they're the best two right now outside of Joll and Lockbird. But it really does depend what you expect this weekend. These could be free Joll and I think that would be very good. A very good meta call for the weekend. But Ash Blossom just hits too many decks because there's a lot of decks in the format right now. Free Ash Blossom. It brings the deck to 41. You could potentially cut Street, but I like Street in the grind game situation because you're still trying to win with Noir. If your opponent doesn't have an out to it, you can just keep attaching to your Noir and then it's just massive and your opponent can't deal with it. So I do think one Street's essential. Okay, so that's 41 cards. This deck has so many ways to win going second as well. So don't think you have to go first, but when you go first, you pretty much always guaranteed win. Like you just always win. 
Okay, so we're gonna go with the extra deck. We play one Mudcracker. This card's not a cost to discard, by the way. So it will trigger your Dark World effects. Um, and all the Dark Worlds are Fiends. So we play one Anima. We play SP Little Knight now. Now the cool thing is, remember you can summon the Ken and Gent, the extra monster zones underneath them, what they're summoning. So when you when you summon Pearly Lily or Lily or Pearly, you can summon an Anima and you can equip it. So your opponent hasn't got a monster to use against you in the following turn. Um, but only do that once you've set up the monster effects that you want to use. So your opponent can now, because uh, your opponent now can impermanent you. So then you have Anima out. And then if you go in second, you can go Anima, suck up a monster, link away that and another monster into SP Little Knight. And then you can banish your card now. So there's many ways to clear cards from your opponent. IP, you are going to find yourself wanting to make IP against your opponent when you go first, because you'll have a bunch of monsters on your side of the field. If you want to make IP, then you can just make SP Little Knight in their turn, and usually that's just enough. Um, Azalea, Azalea is really good. Ken and Jenna lights, so that's why you want to play Azalea. And then we're playing Slack and Magician, two Noir, one Plump, one Noir, two Happiness. You have to play two Happiness still, because when you go second, you don't want to be that much of a disadvantage. This card will win you the game when you go second. Only one beauty. I find that in testing. I never really made two with this list. I would only play one. And the extra is very tight. And then obviously then one down in Magician and one Zeus. You could up the Zeus to two. But if you are considering doing that, I probably would play the new Sky Crisis card instead, Typhon. I did want to kind of fit that into the list. You could potentially add it. If you do add it, just consider what to remove in terms of if you will take out a Noir, you are still playing a Pearly deck. So after your first turn, either going first or second, you're now pretty much relying on your Pearly cards or linking up your monsters to clear their card effects and then taking their monsters to attack the game. But you are in a simplified game, so you're going to use, use your big Noirs to win the game usually. So you definitely want to keep two of them in. And now the side deck have done something different. I figured that if you're going first, you should always win with the Dark World cards. But if you're going second, you're not going to really utilize them as much as you would have done before. So you could potentially side in or smokescreen into a different engine entirely with Pearly. There are a few engines you could use, but in terms of timing for this video, there's not that many I can go over right now. So I'm going to show you why I picked the certain cards in the side deck. I did put in Medora and Caldo to discard with the Pearly spells. The reason why I want to play these cards is because of Tier Element. Tier Element is going to be very good this weekend. It's a very strong deck. You do need to target those decks. And then if you discard and have this in the graveyard, it's pretty strong for the game. Then I went with Free Phantasma. Now the reason why I went with Free Phantasma is when we go second, we are drawing to six. We want to sculpt our hand. So when we summon this, we, we sculpt our hand to the hand we want, but also now our monsters can't be targeted. So we're always resolving our Pearly Lily or our Pearly effects. And because we're only playing one street in the deck list, this is more essential. Then I'm playing Free, Draw and Lockbird. This card is just too good right now with Ken and Jen running around, and you don't want to be getting screwed over by that. This card's actually pretty good against Pearly when they go second, because they can't add cards with um, happiness. You're going to lock them out for making a big noir. Draw's going to be good this weekend. I recommend it to everyone that it should be in your deck list in some way, in the side or main. Then we have the three impermanences. Really, again, what are these in the main deck? Good against Rescue Ace. It's just a very good card. Then now we have the Frost Targets. Just note that you can change these around to what you feel like you should be catering for to beat. So if you're building this deck to beat your locals or regionals that's coming up and you kind of know what the metagame is in that area, build your side deck to beat those decks. Don't just go off exactly what I'm playing right now. That's just a note, okay? Um, so we have Duster, we have Herald of the Abyss. You need an out to the, to um, Pearly, so you do need to play this because they can just sit behind it and you can just keep building your hand and then this will be a way to win. And then obviously Feather Duster, you just need that. Epidemic Virus, because the Dark World Monster that summons back from the grave is 2,500. That's going to come up quite often. It's going to be very nice. Time this right. Don't always just mandatorily flip this up. Time it right. You don't have to use it straight away. The same with Deck Dev. Deck Dev's really good. I like Deck Dev a lot. You could use this against Pearly. Time it for when they use Pearly's effect to, um, to rank up. Or you could just um, use it against like even like Rika. I get it. It's good against many decks in the format. And then we have Dimensional Barrier. Um, as you notice, there's no cross out in the deck. Don't need cross out. If they cross out, if they Dimensional Barrier, you can call XYZs, no problem. You can just use their monsters against them by just linking up, clear their threats, and then Barrier would do very little. Yes, they get another turn, but when they get another turn, they shouldn't be able to do much because you can pretty much control the game with IP. Okay, I'm just going to show you a quick combo. So basically, if you start with Jen, 
Use Gen's effect, give your opponent Ken. Put it in the monsters, extra monster zones, because you play Relinquish. Then Ken's effect will trigger, discard the Rainbox card. And now what this does is it lets you add Silver and then summon uh, Surly to either side of the field. So you want to give it to your opponent. So you put it in the other extra monster zone. Now Surly will make you discard a card because it's been summoned by a Dark World card. You can give it to yourself and make your opponent's card a card if you want to. So that's something else you can do. But you, if you do this, you discard Silver and then Silver has been classed as being discarded by your opponent's card effect. So Silver will still summon itself and then your opponent has to put two cards from their hand to the bottom of the deck. So now they're down to three. Then if you have Frost, or talents change heart and mind control you then take back the ken from them use ken to summon gen again in the extra monster zone and you now use gen's effect to discard another card from the hand so now they're down to two cards and then you can use rainbow's effect to bounce silver to your hand and then now you can use the silver in your hand for your pearly plays and this is before the pearly plays by the way <laughs> and then you can start with just these monsters you could just make ip link into ip and now you can sit back with a rainbow and ip and use these against your opponent um, because usually that's just enough to win the game. That's basically the simple combo. Hope this list makes sense. Test it, enjoy it. There's quite a few small interactions with the deck that will be quite interesting. The deck list is, is pretty good. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.